and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm going to be filling an entire sketchbook spread with cats. I'm going to be including a whole bunch of different cats like small ones, big ones, extra extra big ones, just to get as much variety as I can onto the page. The first thing I did when I was putting together this spread is make a Pinterest board and I've actually made it public so you can go and use it yourself if you want. There's about 30, 31 different images of cats on there and when I was picking them out of course I wanted to include a whole like a variety of cats, different breeds, different shapes and sizes and colours. So if you want to use it yourself it's a good way to test your cat drawing skills and that was the intention for me too was to draw as many different cats as I can in different poses, challenging poses, um, cats lying down, cats sitting up, so I could improve my skills. Um, I'm using a Winsor & Newton sketchbook that I picked up from Officeworks. You can see my review of that sketchbook, or well, you can see when I picked up that sketchbook in my art supply haul video that I did a couple of months back. But here I'm just sketching out the composition, seeing where I want to position the cats on the page. Um, I wanted to include, like I said, some like funny cats, some more serious, I guess, poses and uh, like this little pose on the, on the bottom left there is like a cat sitting like a human, which is kind of funny. Um, Kittens, there's a little cat in a suit, because why not? And originally I wanted to include at least 30 cats, well all 30 cats from the Pinterest board on this page, but I couldn't fit them all in. Um, if I was going to redo this challenge, I would plan it out a bit better. Um, but this is, I think I managed to fit about 20 cats on there, which I'm pretty happy with. This is my first like full sketchbook spread where I've filled both pages and fully coloured everything. Normally I just use my sketchbooks just for basic sketching. Um, I don't really do like finished pieces or try to do an aesthetic sketchbook or anything like that. So this was my first go and I think I did pretty well considering. But this was, the one that I'm drawing now was these little vintage cats. I really like vintage photos of cats, they're just, there's something about them the way that they're posed, it's it's almost like baby photos, but for cats. This cat, you've probably seen the photo before. He's just enormous, and when I was drawing him, I could really feel the way that his body was like folding up into itself with all of his fat rolls. He was like resting on of his arms on his fat roll. I'm not sure what this cat is called. I'm going to do a bit more research into each of these cats because it, it, it's nice to know who you're drawing. But honestly, I really hope this cat is okay because he is huge. And I just hope he's on a diet or something. I, I, I hope he's alright. I hope he's happy and healthy. Almost finished with the sketching now. I'm using this red, um, the, the color rays, sorry, the, um, Prismacolor color arrays or color rays pencils. Um, I, these are the only Prismacolors I have, so I can't compare them to like the, the premium colored pencils or anything like that. But they're pretty good, they're pretty pigmented. The color goes down on the page very smoothly. And I compare that to my other colored pencils that I use, which are the Lyra um, Rembrandt Polycolor which have more of a textured look, which is what I prefer. But these are good for sketching and even though they're supposed to be erasable, it's obviously never going to be the case. Well, from my experience, it's never going to be the case with colored pencils. You, you can't erase them as you would graphite. Um, you can take off most of the color if you draw lightly, but if, if you're going in with a heavy hand, um, with a fully colored piece as you would typically do with a Prismacolor pencil, you're not going to be able to take off more than like one layer, even that. But in saying that, I haven't tried like heavily, heavily erasing 
I feel like it would just be tearing up the paper at that point, like those old blue, um, those old blue erasers that you used to get in primary school that could apparently erase pen, but they would just tear up the page. It's kind of a similar situation to that. This little cat is a little clown kitty. That was another vintage photo, I assume. It was a vintage photo. It was black and white. I'm not sure if it was a reproduction or an actual photo from the Victorian era, but it was cool. And the little cat next to him is actually my cat, Fooey. I wanted to make sure to include her. She's in the Pinterest board too, so if you wanna draw my cat, she's right there. The opportunity awaits you. And here is what the finished sketch part look like. Here I was trying to figure out if how I wanted to color. My original intention was to use these um, alcohol markers that I got from Officeworks. They're just like the cheap brand of alcohol markers. But I realized that I just don't have enough variety of color to draw cats unless I wanted to do something um, like more, be more creative with the colors and to, to use unconventional colors for the cats but I wanted it to be more of a realistic um, color palette with like browns and tans and oranges and I realized I just didn't have the colors were all too vibrant um, I couldn't achieve the look that I was going for with these alcohol markers and even when I was swatching them I used some mark really cheap markers from Kmart too and a lot of the colors are just completely off from the color on the bottom of the pen itself. So they would either be way too light, like you could barely even see them, or they would be like the brown would instead be a weird purpley color. Just not the kind of colors that you would typically use to draw a cat. But I tried. Looking back on it now, it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, I didn't like how the eyes turned out. The alcohol marker kind of blended into the colors around it and gave it kind of this fuzzy look, which I'm pretty, oh, these are just Posca pens that I'm using, the white Posca marker for little highlights in the eyes. But I'm pretty new to alcohol markers actually, so I'm still like trying to figure out how to blend them, how to put the colors down nicely especially with drawing little details like these eyes. I don't know if I should have waited for the layer underneath to dry. Anyway, here I was like, okay, maybe I'll try and color in with my colored pencils instead. So here I'm still using the Prisma colors and soon I'll start using the Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor pencils as well. As I said before, I really like the texture that they give and that was the finished look with colored pencils. So. I ended up saying, yeah, I'm going to go with colored pencils for this one because I have more colors um, in that range of earthy tones and orange and browns and blacks, which I don't have in the alcohol markers. So just adding some little details. And yeah, then I'm going to get started with coloring the full sketchbook spread. started off colouring this little guy with the bunny ears. I used a light pink colour. This is actually, I think this colour is called Dark Flesh. So it's not an actual pink. Again, I don't have a huge range of colours. and I've only just started again investing in materials for traditional art because I've focused on digital art for so long. Um, so when I did my art supply haul using my Christmas, um, using a gift card that I received for Christmas, I just went and picked out the colors that I like the look of in these Lyra poly colors. And I did accidentally pick two of the same flesh tone, which instead I should have got a more, how would you say, a more legitimate pink, like a rose, 
or something along those lines. Um, I only have like two different blues. See with coloured pencils it's not like paints where you can mix your own colours. In, in some sense you can blend colours together to get um, a somewhat more accurate look as, as what you're going for. But obviously it's not the same as paints where you can literally create any colour that you like using just the primaries and secondaries. I think you can, I don't know much about colour theory. Or traditional art in general I'm very new to this so take what I say with a grain of salt please so based on my research on Pinterest this cat is actually 17 years old the bunny rabbit and her name is Ura she's a Scottish fold cat this one that I'm coloring in now with the yellow base is a Abyssinian I think that's how you pronounce it I'm just looking through my Pinterest board now I don't think I actually saved this image on there, it must have been a recommended image, but I do have another Abyssinian cat. Couldn't find the original reference that I used for this one. But there's a really cute Abyssinian cat on TikTok that wears little outfits and she waves goodbye in every video. I can't remember what her name is, but she is very sweet. And they have this really pretty brownish, golden, orange colour. This is another Scottish Fold Cat, or it might be, yeah. This is Waffles the Scottish... <clears throat> Waffles the Scottish Fold. And according to BuzzFeed, he enjoys people watching, playing and licking. This was probably my favourite um, cat to draw out of all of them. I really like... The bright yellows that I included, um, I felt like I could get a, get a nice colour payoff. Some of these Lyra pencils are more vibrant than others and I find that the warm tones like the yellows, the oranges, the warm browns, the golds are a much nicer colour payoff than the cooler colours like the purples and blues but it might just be the specific colours that I chose. They do have a really big range. So, yeah, just adding some little details here, trying to add more dimension to the tail and the bottom half of this cat, really trying to highlight the, the uh, especially unique way that he is sitting. Now I'm getting started on this vintage cat picture of these two little cats in a basket of flowers. I chose this one, apparently it's a vintage postcard, um, which if you go on Pinterest you can find so many of these images and there's just something about them. I love the colour palette in these old images, there's, I don't know how they did it back then, there was something about that was a very artistic look, even though they're photographs, they have a very artistic, soft, painterly kind of vibe to them. They, I just love anything vintage, retro, the look of it, something else. I tried to find more information about these cats, but all I could find is that it was from someone's Tumblr. They're called Shay Carniel on Tumblr. And it appears to be a scan um, from her collection of vintage postcards. So I don't know what year this is from. I guess, I'm guessing 70s or early 80s based on the colour palette and the, the uh, just general vibe, <clears throat> general vibe of the photo. But yeah, I couldn't say for sure. But I chose this image particularly because I wanted to include more reds and more blues and some more unnatural colours on the page just to add a bit of vibrancy. And yeah, I was pretty happy with how this page is looking so far. 
Now I'm getting started on the second page. I think I was about hmm, two or three hours in at this point. So it's taken me quite a while. But it was worth it. I feel like I learned a lot, especially during the sketching stage. I've been using, I'm reading this book recently, um, Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis. I would really, 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 re like highly recommend it. Um, you don't actually have to buy the book. I think all of Loomis's works are available as free PDFs online. As far as I know, his work is in the public domain. So it's perfectly fine to share, um, to re-upload, to download. Like you don't have to worry that you're doing anything wrong. You can download the PDFs and they're like full 100, 200 page books that go really in depth about all of the fundamentals of illustration. So my partner bought me creative illustration, which is more focused on illustration for advertising, marketing, um, even though the book is from the 1940s, so something like 90, 80, 90 years old now. It's still super relevant today. Obviously, a lot of the really specific advice about submitting to agencies and getting your work in magazines and such won't be as relevant now. But there's a lot of general information about composition, um, how to create an attractive design, how to... Um, convey certain emotions and messages through design. I think it's really worth picking up if you want to really improve your art fundamentals, whether you're a beginner or a more advanced artist, I think it would be beneficial to everyone. And the other PDF that I recently downloaded and I've been working through is Fun with a Pencil by Andrew Loomis. Um, if you've ever watched any of Proko's videos, you're probably familiar with um, the Loomis method of drawing heads. I think he has a whole series or a couple of videos about the Loomis method, which is really helpful for constructing heads and maintaining proportions. And I sound like I'm going on a tangent, but the reason I'm talking about this is because it goes into constructing, like looking, t turning, looking at something and turning it into simple shapes, breaking it down into shapes, which is like one of the age old techniques that they teach you in art school. And I used that technique here when I was drawing these cats and I found that it was actually really beneficial in getting the proportions right, getting the shapes and seeing drawing form, I think is how Andrew Loomis describes it, is drawing form rather than line. So you're really looking at the shape of the drawing, as, of the character as if it's in 3D space. You're not just drawing an outline, you're actually constructing it as if you were sculpting something out of clay which is a really helpful tip and it was really useful as I said when drawing these cats. Um, so yeah I'll put a link to a description, I'll put a link in the description to that um, PDF if you wanted to check it out. It's mostly about drawing humans um, but I think it applies to drawing anything really if you're able to look at something and break it down into shapes which is something that they tried to drill into me when I was in art school as a kid my mum put me into a bunch of different art schools and they would say, you know, they'll, they'll give you those how to draw books that say draw a circle, add some rectangles, um, you know, to draw whatever. Basically the same method that Loomis describes in his Fun with the Pencil book. But back then I was very stubborn and I liked the way that I was drawing and I didn't want to use their techniques. I thought they were silly. I didn't see the value in them. And I ended up dropping out of art school multiple times. Um, I do regret that now. I wish, I felt like it was stifling my creativity as a 10 year old. But I do wish I could go back now and tell myself that it is worth learning those fundamental skills. Worth learning how to see things in shapes and form. In relation to the environment, etc. Because now I'm kind of having to teach myself these things at 28. When I could have learned them at 10. But you know, it is what it is and it's fun to learn these things now and, and see how they apply, how I can use them to make very quick and easy improvements to my work. And finally here I'm drawing my cat Fooey. Tell you a little bit about her, she's 16 years old. I've 
had her since I was 13. She originally was my parents' cat. We got her when we first moved into the house that we're in now. Um, when she was about seven months old. And then two years ago, my parents moved out and my partner and I moved in. Well, I was already living here, but my partner moved in with me into the house that was owned by my parents. And then we bought the house from my parents. And we thought, Fui, my cat was 14 then, and we thought it would be too stressful for her to move to an entire new residence at her age. So she stayed here with us and she still resides here to this day. She's had a few health issues. Um, she's had some liver problems and problems with her thyroid, which I know is pretty common with older cats. But we've got all that under control with medication and she is doing really well. She, Before I took her to the vet and she got a diagnosis, she was losing weight. She was getting scabs and scars on her neck from scratching herself so much. I think it was stress. She was missing the litter box. Um, that's why I took her in to get her checked out and we found out that she had a blood test. We found out that she had these issues. But since she's been on the medication, she's put a bunch of weight back on. Um, she's no longer longer scratching herself. She hasn't got any of the scars or scabs on her neck anymore. And yeah, she's doing well. But here is the finished spread. I was pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you. Bye.